everyone. This is Chaitali Bak from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defense Universe based out of Cyprus. Thursday morning, ever since Russia first attacked Ukraine, since then, things have been changing a lot all over the world, country taking sides of either Ukraine or Russia. And we at ADU have been following each and every news very closely and minutely. Today, we have with us Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, who is going to discuss further with us the actions that is happening out right now and how the world is going to change further. Welcome, sir. And to take the talks forward, we have Editor Sangeeta Saxena Aviation and Defense Universe. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you very much, Atali. And welcome, Bhatia, sir, to ADU's chat room again. Always a pleasure to have you here, sir, with us. And today, sir, we are here for a very special purpose. India has great friends in, uh, at the moment in both Russia and US. The Russia on one side and US leading the world on the other side. Now, in such a situation today, sir, I would really like to understand from you, and of course, our audience would also like to understand as to what is India's position in all this, and how India's situation uh, will continue post the war finishes and we get back to normalcy. How is it going to continue with uh, all the sides? Uh, you know, when the world was taking some sides, we abstained from the voting. So it's a very interesting situation and we want to talk with India in focus. Sir. So welcome to the show, sir. Uh, thank you very much. It's always great to be on the EDU platform. Thank you, Chitali. Thank you, Ms. Sangeeta Saxena. It's always great to be in conversation with you and uh, a giant to all your viewers also. Uh, I think this is a very interesting, uh, 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 I would say, uh, proposition what you had this said. Now, uh, India, uh, India has, uh, you know, let me start by saying India that today has risen responsible, resurgent nation. It's a regional leader, it's a regional power, a global leader. And uh, the world looks up to us to resolve uh, certain issues, especially the ongoing issue with Ukraine, uh, Russia, Ukraine, US, Europe. Uh, we are more acceptable because we are part of all multilaterals. If you look at it, we are part of multilaterals all over, whether it's BRICS or the Russian, India, China, RIC. Uh, we also the multilateral with the IPSA, with the uh, you know G20, G, uh, with the G7 and the G20, D10. So uh, quad, of course, definitely quad. Uh, so we uh, are looked upon acceptable as a you know cultural soft power uh, with everyone very responsible. Uh, so that is how the pressure in India is to try and resolve this. But India doesn't. India doesn't take sides. Uh, today the world is changing. The world order is changing. Uh, the world order is shifting from uh, the from the west to the east, and when it shifts to the world world order from west to the east, we have China, of course, a major power, and then we have India, uh, the, the Asian giants. And uh, what we look at, uh, I, what I see is uh, uh, sort of a China Russia uh, as one grouping, uh, countering the U.S. Uh, and the West, uh, with China, of course, uh, being the uh, you know. Uh, the senior partner in this grouping. And uh, where, where India then stands is India as a, a you know, balancing power. Uh, India being a leader, it's a balancing power. So we will get booed both by uh, Russia, uh, by the US, and uh, of course, uh, China carries out some military coalition. You know, China will be a sharp power. Uh, if you're not with China, you're against China. So China wants to uh, do that and get in, make, make sure that India remains away from the US camp. Of course, China doesn't understand India. So in all this and what's happening today in the context of the Russian-Ukraine uh, uh, crisis, uh, you call it, because they, Russia is not calling an invasion, by the way. Russia is not terming the invasion. Uh, the, the, the world is saying it's an invasion, but Russia is saying it's not an invasion. They're protecting their own interests. That's what it is. And so India is taking a very nuanced approach, I think. A, a very well uh, balanced uh, approach. We have not taken sides. We are neither pro US nor pro Russia. We are and not anti Russia, not anti US. I think in this, we are, we are pro the world. Uh, we, we are looking at a, a, you know, a peaceful world. We are looking at uh, economic development. We are looking at pro India. We are a big country, well being of 1.4 billion people is our priority. Uh, so I, I feel that uh, India has done exceedingly well in pro protecting, projecting its interests. And in the immediate, we of course look at uh, uh, early end uh, to the crisis through diplomatic means. Uh, so sir, uh, we wanted to understand from you, sir, militarily, 
what is this war yeah militarily i think uh, uh, the military objectives uh, are the outcome of the uh, political end state to which russia may desire because russia definitely has taken the initiative in this uh, right or wrong i'm not uh, here to judge that uh, that's not uh, our position and uh, what i feel is the military objective is uh, depending on russia's end state you know it's very very easy to say the, the world believes that it is a regime change uh, it could be an accession of uh, ukraine or integration of, UA, of ukraine to russia as russia would like to believe because russia not like i said russia is not never called an invasion it's it's not an invasion as russia is concerned and whatever the pictures which are coming out i i, I as a military man as a soldier I, I don't see tactical deployment. I don't see operational deployment. All the tanks which are moving, they're not moving tactical formations. They're moving line astern in way, way ahead of the road. They're laying siege. Of course, the Russian uh, operational art is very clear. They, they, they use the air power and they use the airborne troops thereafter. Uh, they did so in Czechoslovakia. They did so in you know, Georgia. They did so in Afghanistan also. And now uh, in Ukraine, uh, get the, get the air, airspace, uh, take the airfields, land troops, land logistics, and then expand outwards. But in this particular case, though they have addressed the major towns, uh, but the capital they have not addressed. They are the outskirts for the last two, three days or so. Uh, I feel uh, uh, militarily what they are doing is they don't want to hurt the people. They don't want political damage. Whatever has happened has happened. There will be some damage definitely, but they don't want to antagonize the people. So it's a very uh, sort of a, uh, Russian tactics and operations uh, are based on uh, getting the get to the military objectives of uh, getting Ukraine, uh, they want to impose their will on Ukraine. Simply, you know, you always you go to war to impose your will on your adversary, and that's exactly what they want to do. Uh, whether they want a friendly government there or they want to integrate Ukraine, is, is something which we'll have to see. The time will only tell because uh, these are big games being played, and uh, what the NATO does, what the European Union does, what the US does, also the reaction action. Uh, state capabilities. So militarily, I find uh, that the operations uh, uh, by both Ukraine is a uh, definitely Ukraine can't stand up to Russia. Let's uh, be very honest. It's, the Russian uh, military is just too powerful for Ukraine to stand up. And uh, though the weapons may be given by the others, but no one's going to come to Ukraine's aid. Uh, I, I don't think any country is going to interfere militarily. Uh, they will protect the outer rim uh, of the NATO and ensure that Russia does not expand westwards, and Russia wants to ensure that NATO does not expand eastwards. So we will find Ukraine as a conflict zone for some time to come, and uh, I do feel that the hybrid warfare or the gray zone warfare will uh, we will see it for uh, for for some years now. It's not going to be so easy. So militarily, I I feel that Russia is uh, not in a hurry to. Uh, finish off the thing uh, as long as the three or four uh, whatever the aims are achieved uh, they're not uh, likely to fight. right sir and uh, sir in continuation with what you are saying uh, sir da, does this mean that uh, you know it's heading where i mean does it mean that it's heading towards uh, an unending sort of a situation or uh, do you see an end to it sir no, I, I don't see it's unending. I think I think the the, the military part is going to end, end, end uh, uh, you know soon. The, the only thing is that Russia is holding its horses. They don't want, uh, like I said, they don't antagonize the people. Uh, so they don't want to enter cities and they don't want to get involved in the you know fighting built up areas, uh, urban area, urban, urban warfare, and they don't want to uh, uh, they don't want to hurt the people also or little damage. Because in the end, they would like a friendly people. If they, if they, you know, of course, Ukraine would be very hurt, and uh, some of the uh, media which you see, they're very hurt, and obviously they're very hurt because it has disturbed everything. Uh, there is a fight uh, going on, whether we like it or not. Uh, but in the end, I, I do feel that uh, they will station their forces uh, there. They will camp. Or they will have their camps, and uh, we'll have a. They'll have a friendly government in Ukraine. Uh, possibly democratically elected. Uh, we know how government, government changes. Government regime changes is happening all over the world. It's not only Russia. Everyone, everyone has been doing it. Any, any powerful nation has been doing it. Or US has been doing it. And, uh, you, have, you protect your national interests. Uh, but I feel the, the present war, which is going on, what we call the war, uh, will, will end as soon as Russia achieves uh, its objective, which would be, I suppose, uh, it will be a short war. It won't be long. Right, sir. And so one thing which has really come out of this uh, conflict is that uh, we see a very major perception management exercise by the whole world. 
and uh, this is information warfare at its peak sir so how do you uh, you know place this to actually traditional form of war which is also happening side by side so we live in a very interesting time we live in a you know networked world interconnected world everyone interconnected and you, you can reach uh, uh, 50 the world's population within seconds because what you post on social media gets multiplied uh, you know it's a multiplier effect exponential uh, thing and uh, everyone's watching it uh, the, the tv channels and uh, you know the indian uh, tv channels are Uh, excellent apps very really fast with the news uh, we have 1000 plus uh, news channels itself so we we find uh, the, the, the information overload and that is where they take advantage because everyone has to be the first to reach the, the verification the veracity is not checked and we have number of indian uh, journalists brave of them to be there in the conflict zone and uh, we we are but what we are getting is more from the west we we getting less from the from the russian point of view what part of you we getting more from the west because that is easily available to us so basically the language barrier is not there the accessibility is there the social media platforms are managed by the west owned by the west facebook uh, twitter instagram so we we are dependent on that so that is what we start believing in it it's a question of narratives war of narratives Uh, and i think information domain uh, is a very important domain we always used to say earlier also it's not new time uh, when you say time uh, essential elements of national power is domestic information uh, military and economic domain so but this time i think uh, information domain is more important uh, more critical than the other three domains we 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 find uh, uh, so many contradictory things coming but we believe what we want to believe what we have first we start believing that Uh, lesson to be learned is uh, what we talk of uh, you know virtual societal warfare you change the beliefs and the values and the psyche of people it's not only propaganda it's not only opinion uh, you you start changing their beliefs everyone believes that you know ukraine is under dogs and everyone has to pro ukraine because that's the, that that's what the media was coming about uh, russia itself is trying to say that they have done this and not that so we'll have to uh, get uh, that is why i suppose the interviews which you are doing in adju as i saw the three of them for the uh, general das and general bali parwa and of course uh, uh, ranjit ray they are very important actually because there we get an objective analysis uh, it is not breaking news it is not uh, for a viewership which is uh, you know usually taken out so i think there are there are platforms which are also doing a good job like the education the universe so media wars will become very important and the lesson has to be learned fast by india we need system and structures to make sure that we are equally adept at information warfare uh, something we don't have is uh, structure and systems we need structures formal structures we, we do it but it is formal structures which are required so we should be taking we should looking at uh, what is happening as lessons to be learned for us in the future we don't not done badly in information war we not done well in information war like i suppose if i may take it a little longer uh, the balapot strikes you know the balapot is a construct of the pakistanis balapot is about 20 km away jabhat object known terrorist training camp but today we all call it balapot and 20 km is, is when you talk of sub metric accuracy it's very very this thing so there we bit into the pakistani narrative of balapot we won the battle but lost the information so th- this also what we are seeing right now is should be a lesson learned to us today india's information war also in ukraine you know our, our people they want to know what what we are doing so we have to we we, we got statements coming out of the me but we little more more than that so these are narratives is war of narratives which is going on and uh, i hope uh, the correct narratives come out but the information war never get the correct narratives we never get the correct picture we have to analyze we have to articulate and we see this So, sir, uh, when we continue with this point, there is another very important point that India has its own stance, and uh, India has a very, very strong and old relationship with Russia. It also has currently a very strong relationship with US. Now, uh, you know, where is this strategy, Indo-Russian strategy, uh, Indo-US strategy, India and the various formations, India the various bodies? uh how have we placed ourselves uh, vis-a-vis this war sir uh, you know it's a very difficult situation uh, a very conflict is difficult and a very difficult situation if, but i don't see any reason for india to choose between the two we have an indo us strategic partnership 
uh, which is growing and it is it is more than the strategic partnership and uh, we, we we need it we need to bind together and we have an indo russia uh, uh, strategic partnership uh, we have a friendship treaty 1971 uh, russia has always uh, been uh, uh, very friendly towards india our interests actually it's a, it's a question of basic basic national interest and this congress and convergence of international interest today between india and russia between india and the us so we should look at india us as one and india russia as one it doesn't mean that they are mutually exclusive so when we talk of india russia we look at a defense cooperation 60% of the equipment uh, military hardware of uh, india and, and i talk military hardware i talk of naval platforms air force sets uh, mech formations uh, air defense these, these are all russian origin and we can't shift uh, if we even want to we can't do it we can't afford it it's not only the equipment and the economic cost it is the induction it is the uh, doctrines which we have evolved over the years so russia is a partner russia is a very liable partner it helped in 1971 it is helped everywhere uh, it has been uh, uh, number of times and uh, you know, stood for us us on the other hand has also looked after its own interest it had pakistan as a frontline state then it realized that the fertility of pakistan and it saw india growing and today india and us have, uh, have got uh, an excellent uh, uh, point uh, strategic partnership going so india should be looking at balancing the two rather than trying to uh, side with the one and that's what exactly india has done uh, why should we not do that i i, I feel no reason why every nation looks after its own interests whether it's russia china uh, us uh, or european union look at germany it says okay economic sanctions on uh, uh, russia but i will still get gas from there okay so uh, it is not it is not so easy uh, you 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 can't uh, you can't say i will do this and i'll go all up on that so india is very what is the un uh, i suppose uh, un is never uh, the un is un it is uh, when the p5 is there and india should sit on the high table if we're not sitting on the high table why does the world expect us they, they don't give us a seat on the high table but they expect us to resolve world issues so i, I find this a little strange the usa wants india the russia russia wants india the european union wants india the the british want india to do something give us a seat on the high table we'll see and the committee of nations we need the seat on the high table we are a big power economic power we, we are a military power we, we are diplomatically we have proven our thing we are more acceptable in asia in africa you know south america in, in europe we got acceptability so you give us a seat but no india will not get the seat but we want you to mediate mediate and you know find a solution so that is not the way it works very true and sir uh, this abstinence from the vote uh, thrice sir uh, is it going to affect some relationships for india and uh, make some stronger or uh, you know it's just a matter of time and people will forget uh, the, the interest drive relationships uh, so i i feel we have congress of interest right no community interest right now um, the court is the, the indo pacific it is not the indo pacific asia pacific was redone in the indo pacific for some reason reason to that the court is the reason we are not part of the orcus Okay, it's not that you know. If it is a security, the part is not a security. Uh, it's not a security uh, multilateral. We have a part of it, Malabar and all, but that's not. A, it's not a security multilateral. Part itself got lot of infirmities. You know, it's it is lot of high high on hopes, but uh, little less on uh, substance. Let me put it very bluntly, uh, because India's interests lie in deterring China's aggressiveness by binding to balance. Right? We want a peaceful uh, Indo-Pacific. We, we need the Indo-Pacific, uh, we need uh, the Indian Ocean especially, where trade takes place, which is the global rule, uh, you know, rule-based world order. So everything, we need that. Uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, port, there are interests, but there are conflicts also. It's not, uh, it's not a this thing, unlike AUKUS. But no one, no one told us to be part of the AUKUS. Right. So I, what, I, what I'm looking at is very simple. I want, I'm, I'm looking at the Indian interests in the immediate term, Indian interest in the mid term, Indian interest in the long term, which is peace, stability, economic development in the long term. And the immediate term, we want the present crisis to end for economic development, for economic growth, for uh, things to get back to normalcy, and also the, the uh, uh, safety and the safe return of Indian citizens. 
uh, which is very important to us because we have to safeguard our not only national interest but national interest and people also. We, we, I think, uh, presently with the ministers right now in the neighboring countries in Poland and Belarus and other countries, I think that's the right approach. Get them out, get them to safety. That's our obligation. It's mandatory for us. We look after them. And then we take it further after that. So we've had a tragedy also in this conflict and we lost a student. And uh, so do you think the government is doing enough? Uh, you feel it's doing good. Huh? You feel it's doing nice. But do you think that nice is enough? I think the government is doing enough. We, you know, we, 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 we expect the government to do everything. No, the government cannot do everything. There, there are sections uh, of near space. There is a of landing aircraft, getting you no, 20,000 is a huge number. It's not that you just you know gather 20,000 people and you put them in a particular bubble and get them out. It's a contract zone. And we know what happens in contract zones. We've been all our life we've been some sort of contract zone or other, uh, whatever you may say. And India has uh, has the expertise, we have the experience of evacuating our people from various conflict zones, whether it is German, even during COVID from Wuhan. And not only Indians, we have also evacuated uh, uh, you know, uh, neighboring countries. And we also evacuated uh, uh, people who are stranded there belonging to the West also. It's not only Indians. So, uh, and I find as far, as far again, I don't know whether it's right or wrong because of the information domain, uh, but uh, uh, Pakistanis also are in it and they're saying that we are Indians. So uh, that is the acceptability of an Indian passport or Indian citizen, the Indian, the name India. Uh, so, uh, and we should get them out. If we can get, why? We have done it earlier, we should get it out. There, there are, you know, when you talk of Sagar, so you can go through all the, all the region. Uh, we, we had Sri Lanka, we had Bangladesh, so all those want to come, we get them. But the priority should have to, priority of course has to go to the Indians first, because that's the main aim. And I think we have done, we have done reasonably well. Look at the priority, look at the priority of the government. It's placed ministers there. Which of the government has done that? It's not done that. So that yes, is the priority which is the ministers are there. We beefed up the Ukrainian embassy with extra staff, Russian speaking staff, Ukrainian, you know, because Russian has a language over there. We beefed up the thing earlier. Advisors are issued even before the 22nd of February for them to evacuate. Of course, it's very easy for the advisor to be issued and very difficult people to come out. Uh, but uh, the government is doing that, even two advisors issued today. So it is not only things, things are moving. I think we should grant to the government that we we are uh, behaving like a very reasonable, responsible uh, part, looking after citizens. Uh, and um, yes, very sorry about the tragedy, but many are conflicts, so some, some things will go wrong. It is bad, it's happened. And I hope uh, that is the last of it. No more, uh, we, we don't suffer any more. Right, sir. I think this is something which is very, very true and needs to be told to the world. Because uh, you know what happens when these things happen, you know, the first uh, blow is uh, personal and the second blow is to the government. And we are really seeing that Indian government is doing so much from the day one. It's not that it hasn't it's got up, woken up late or something like that. It's really doing so much. And I think, you know, I, I agree with what you're saying that there will be mishaps, but then, you know, the lesser... We can only hope that things get better soon and, uh, you know, both the countries get back to their normalcy. And uh, thank you very much, sir, for being here with us, clearing our doubts on a lot of things, which we felt, you know, uh, needed to be cleared. Uh, we've had so much of talk about geopolitical, but we wanted to talk about military. We also wanted to talk about India's point of view. We also wanted to understand the crisis in its overall concept. And uh, I think you've done just a wonderful uh, thing for us by letting our audience know that there's a different side to the story also. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for being with us. And I'm taking you back to now Chitali, who's in the studios in Cyprus. So Chitali, back to you. Thank you so much, Patia, sir. Every time we have a discussion like this, new points come up, which makes us ponder and think more about these issues. Well, definitely war at this generation is not going to be good. It is going to turn worse. So better, we all hope that this ends as soon as possible. Thank you so much sir, for your time. Thank you, ma'am. And hope to have next chat session, not on war, but something good, something better that we can hope for a better future and a better world. Thank you, sir. Have a nice evening ahead. Thank you, Dali. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, thank you very much. It's been all thank enjoyable you, talk. Thank you very much. Thank you.